What's up guys, welcome back to Gladiator's Tennis and today another Technifiber racket, this time the TF40 305 16 by 19 The namings of Technifiber, check out the specs. Grish? Yes. Opinion. So, Arik, you know how sorry, they have... Sorry, but do you like how long my sentences are? Grish? Opinion. Right. So, Arik, you know how they have like these flat grips, the Technifiber ones? Oh, yeah, right. They're yeah. like different shape. Mm -hmm. I can never know if I like them or not. Like, uh, let us know in the comments if you like the Technifiber flat grips. So, in terms of the racket itself, the 18 by 20 version that we've already done a review on, check out the review somewhere there, was really good. I really liked it. 16 by 19, not my pattern of choice, but uh, I guess we'll see a bit more power, a bit more spin. All right. The more open string pattern version of a racket that I love. Doesn't sound like a good idea and it turned out not to be. The TF4305 16x19 was supposed to be a more forgiving and easier version of the 18x20. Not only that, but also a bit more balanced and not so control oriented. However, what ended up happening is that the racket kind of lost its purpose, at least for me. During the playtest, I was expecting to experience a TF40, but with less control and more power, obviously. However, sometimes the racket would shoot the ball out like a rocket launcher, and other times it could decide to just not give any power to the ball whatsoever. That's why I'm saying that the purpose was kind of lost. On the forehands, the racket seemed like a feather to me. It almost seemed like I was carrying the racket instead of swinging. This has nothing to do with the string pattern. It bothered me in the 18x22. It can be fixed with some lead, so I guess it's not a massive negative. Though the lack of control and the unpredictable power is kind of a negative for me. I was never sure as to how much power and spin I should apply to my approaches and therefore losing all the confidence in my game. On the back ends, it gets even worse. Wasn't feeling that awesome stability like with the 18x20 and once again, unpredictable power was absolutely f***ing up everything. Cross court rallies, sure, they worked. Switching down the lines though, not so much. Slices, however, didn't feel bad, so that's a plus. I usually never mention slice in my voiceovers, but here I felt like I had to. Talking about the slides, might as well talk about the volleys, where the racket felt very nimble and very fast. I gotta say, everything that had to do with touch and feel, the racket was doing pretty well. The lack of stability wasn't as noticeable on the volleys, and directing the ball right where I wanted wasn't requiring any additional efforts. On the serve, the racket did show a pretty good performance. Thanks to the more open string pattern, the racket provides you with way more power on the first flats and better angle on the slice serves. I do still prefer the tighter string pattern for the serves mainly because of the stability and the better control, but that's kind of a personal preference, so the 16x19 might even be better for you. On the kick second serves, it did do way better than the 18x20, but that's kind of obvious. It's easier for the strings to bite into the ball and give it that top spin effect. So yes, on the serves, really good. On the returns, the racket wasn't too bad either. If I had enough time to do a relatively long backswing, the return could be lethal. For the short swings, it was a little more complicated, however. The design is something that I do like though. It's simple and classy, but kind of modern, not bad. So once again, another kind of negative review, but still, who would I recommend this to? Again, if you want a balanced frame to play kind of everywhere and play with a lot of diversity from baseline defense to aggressive approaches and finishing the points at the net, this one might be an option. Well, if you're looking for rackets like the Wilson Blade 16x19 or the Babolat Pure Strike or the Selenko Whiteout, you could as well give this one a shot. You might actually like it. It's just that a 98 with a 16x19 string pattern rarely makes me feel good. There are some exceptions, but still. So yeah, if you do try it, maybe take some lead with you to experiment a little bit and see how that goes.
Arig, 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 arig. Yes, sir. What is it that you wanted the Glads to know? Well, I wanted to ask them something. I wanted to, it's a big task, you know, to do, but I want them to, you know, do this movement. Please subscribe. <laughs> Please subscribe. <laughs> and, and follow us on Instagram. Thank you. Wait, wait, Arig, you, you still don't know what you're going to say? I feel like this is the perfect timing to ask you. So, Arik, what are your thoughts on the racket? My thoughts on this racket that I don't know shit about. Fantastic racket. Exactly. 16 by 19. Oh, yes. It's 16 by 19, guys. 98 uh, inches. Uh, wait. Yeah, 98 inches. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, shut up, Grish. I'm, I'm trying to... All right. First things first. Clearly, the sweet spot of this racket is on the beam because both Grisha and I hit winners only when we were touching the ball with the frame. In contrary, when I was hitting the ball clean, the ball wasn't getting that much speed, which leads me to one of the weak aspects of this model, the power. Not providing so much power is not always a bad thing. Some people will benefit from that and gain a big amount of control, and I am one of those people. Bear in mind that I'm always hungry for more power but I really enjoyed the control of my ground strokes, especially on the forehand. But if you want even more consistency on your forehand side, just do drop shots and you won't miss a ball, trust me. Or just watch me. <laughs> on the backhand, it felt decent actually. Sometimes when talking about the defensive backhands, I complain about not having too much power, especially when the racket is not 100 inches square. But in this case, I was able to skip from dangerous situations and also vary it with my backhand by changing the direction with down the line shots. On the volleys, it was decent as well. It didn't feel hard to maneuver on the fast coming shots and I'm sure that somehow they incorporated Dustin Brown's soul in this Technifiber because drop shot volleys is something natural that this racket does. And when it comes to the serve, well, I guess this review wasn't the most useful one because I didn't get any clear conclusions. Sometimes I would get a lot of control combined with a good direction on my first serve, but then on the next serve I would hit a huge out without feeling the ball at all. So all I can say, maybe it's not exactly the best one for serving, but it's okay. And now check out the grades and tell us what you think about it. Thanks for watching.